Oh man, I love this job. Uh oh. Have you ever wondered how an aeroplane flies? After all, it's a massive tube of metal full of fuel and chairs and people and luggage and those neat little trays of airplane food, all of which adds up to something that can weigh as much as 440 tonnes. That is the same as four blue whales. But every minute, thousands of heavy planes manage to take off and fly high up in the air, transporting people and packages all over the world. It might look like magic, but it's actually down to some really cool science. The first people to fly were probably the Chinese about 750 years ago. They managed to make kites that were strong enough to carry the weight of a person that stayed tethered to the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, watch me perform the first flight in history. <laughs> <laughs> I did it! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I still did it! Oh, yeah, that was the plan, at least. Then, in 1903, the Wright brothers made the first powered, controlled flight in America. Driven by a propeller, they managed to stay up in the air for a whole 12 seconds, and they travelled about the third of a length of a football field. What say you, we take her for a spin? Oh? Today? Yeah, right now. Well, the weather looks good. I think we missed the runway. Today's planes have powerful jet engines, which means they can go a lot further and a lot faster. The fastest commercial airplane, Concorde, could go faster than the speed of sound, which means you would see it coming before you heard it coming. Let's go! Woo. Hey, guys. All right. Hey, man. Didn't hurt. I got a need for speed. Oh, man, I love this job. Uh-oh. So, how do they work? Well, it's all to do with different forces that are acting on an object. Forces are invisible, but they make an object do something. Most often, when you apply a force to something in one direction, you'll make it move in that direction. When you let go of something in mid-air, it falls down because the force of gravity is pulling it downwards. Gravity pulls all objects towards the Earth which is why we stay stuck on the ground. So you might imagine that gravity would pull a plane straight down to the ground too. Well, luckily for all you budding jet setters, a real plane has other forces acting on it that can keep it up there in the sky. There's thrust from the jet engines or the propellers, which pushes the plane forwards. If you stood behind a plane's jet engines, which I would not recommend you do, you would feel the air rushing in your face. The engines push the air back, and the laws of physics mean that that pushes the plane forwards. It's called an equal and opposite reaction. The more thrust you have, the faster you'll go. Then there's drag which pushes in the opposite direction from the thrust, slowing the plane down. If you ever jump on your bike and pedal down the path, you can feel the drag force on your face. You're pushing through the air and all those tiny invisible air molecules are slowing you down. The faster you go, the more air molecules collide with you every second and the more that drag force slows you down. A plane wants to go fast, so it wants as little drag slowing it down as possible, which is why it's designed to be streamlined, to be this smooth, pointed shape, so it can cut through the air like a fish through water. Hello, Cooey. I'm looking for an upgrade. Not a problem, madam. Oof, ghastly. Well, all right then. 
hole. I got an idea. Who was that for you? Absolutely perfect. The thing is, though, thrust and drag can't explain how a plane stays up in the air. For that, you need another force called lift. Lift is what you get when air moves over a specially shaped object. You'll notice that even though the design of planes has changed over time, they all have something in common. Long wings that stick out from the main body. If you look carefully at a modern wing, you'll see it's not just one piece of metal. There are lots and lots of pieces connected together. Most of them can move, and some of the most important pieces are the flaps at the back on the trailing edge. If I cut through the wing, what you'd see would be this, and the yellow bit is the flap. When the plane is ready to take off, the pilot extends the flaps that changes the angle of the wing. As the engine's thrust pushes the plane along the runway, air molecules hit the underside of the wing. They get pushed downwards and the wing and the plane get pushed upwards. The faster you go, the more lift you get too. So by the time the plane gets to cruising speed, which is around 560 miles an hour, the pilot can tuck up the flap and the wing will be super streamlined again. The lift force from the specially shaped wings is enough to cancel out the plane's weight due to gravity. And that keeps it up in the air and the thrust pushes it along. With enough forward speed and enough lift from the wings, you can keep almost anything flying. The heaviest plane that ever flew weighed more than 700 tons or the same as six blue whales. Hmm, it's boring. Clear skies here. There's more chance of me seeing pigs fly than spotting anything unusual out here. What? Huh? And now that we've mastered the science behind flight, we have gone for it in a big way. Right now, as you're watching this video, there are probably about 10,000 planes and more than a million people in the sky all around the world. So, a plane flying through the air experiences four forces. Thrust, drag, gravity, and lift. As long as the plane is going fast enough, then the lift force on the wings will be bigger than the plane's weight due to gravity, and it will be able to climb and fly through the air. Now, what I'm wondering is, when will we be getting our in-flight meal? Because I am starving. Anyone? Thanks for watching. For more awesome Explained with Lego videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and comment below with any question that you want us to answer. Anyway, gotta go. Uh, got a flight to catch. Mm.